This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with the guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Obey your higher self or suffer. Now, I know many of us have heard the phrase, be careful about what you put out into the universe. And a lot of times, well, most of the times, that's associated with a negative connotation, but it also can be a positive connotation also because uh, what we speak, the tongue, the tongue has the power to kill or heal, right? Uh, I can bring to life, I can bring to death. Now, some things I bring to death might not be through righteousness, it might be wrong. Some things I bring through death might be right. Some things need to die. Some things do not need to live. Some things do need to live. But whatever the situation is, I hold the power with the tongue. And the reason being is, and I talk about this a lot, man. We got the higher self and the lower self. And when those things come together in unison for righteousness, man, you can do some powerful things. Uh, even if it's not for righteousness, you can still do some, some powerful or horrific things, some evil things. But we're going to stay on the positive end. So when the physical side of me has a thought, right? That means my higher self and my lower self, man, we, we on the same vibe, right? On the same wavelength, I got a thought. Now that thought, that's just acknowledgement that we're on the same vibe, acknowledgement. Where it gets more in depth, and more serious when you speak it. Because now, not only did you acknowledge what you're supposed to be doing, but now you spoke it. And when you speak it, that's a contract. That is a contract between your higher self and your lower self. And you must be on that mission, on that purpose to fulfill that prophecy. You gotta, you gotta do it. If not, you will suffer or you'll, you'll suffer either from guilt or some other way you'll suffer. But you will suffer once you speak something into existence. Once you speak it, you're under contract. And um, the clock is ticking. So I'll tell you a story. That's what I do. I'm a storyteller. So this was uh, my previous marriage uh, 20 years ago. Um, for a few years during that time, I had been having this thought, man, I don't know, this deep feeling about there's something wrong with spending all this money on these holidays. And I was like, man, I was in my twenties, my mid twenties. And I was like, man, this is a trap. This is a trap. Like every month there's a holiday and the man is putting out most of the money during these holidays. And sometimes, man, we're going broke um, to satisfy and please and, and make family members happy, particularly the woman you with. Uh, think about it, man. Every month, there's something going on where you got to spend money. And I was like, even though I was in my mid-20s, I was like, man, this ain't cool. I got I to gotta start saving my bread, saving my chips. And, uh, man, this feeling was deeply embedded in me where I couldn't just let it go. So my kids were young, but I went to my wife at the time. I told her, I said, hey, this is deeply rumbling my spirit about the spending with the holidays, particularly Christmas. I said, this is, this is really disturbing me, moving my spirit, that something ain't right with this. And uh, 
what we want, what I want to do is, instead of spending on us, let's give this money that we would have, we would have spent to charity, some charity of our choice. Um, I think she was kind of hesitant, but she agreed, right? But I said, we're going to get the kids a few things because they're young. They don't really understand. They won't understand. Not really understand. They won't understand at all. They're young. I said, so we'll get them a few things. But the money, the big money, let's get that to charity. So <laughs> Christmas rolls around. Now, we will spend Christmas Eve, the night, right before Christmas, of course, at her folks' house. And we will bring in Christmas right after midnight at their home. So, Christmas hits, midnight. We're at her folks' house. People are opening gifts. Everybody's there, man. Her family, her side of the family. Everybody's there. They're opening gifts. The kids are opening gifts. Everybody. A bunch of kids. A bunch of adults. Her sister's there. Her sister's husband is there. Opening gifts. Everybody's having a blast. I'm not opening anything. Man, I'm good. You know, I'm good with this. Right? It's not a big deal to me at all. I don't realize that she has left the room, the living room, and headed to the back room, one of the bedrooms. So I don't I don't realize this. So someone comes from the back room back to the front room and says, "Hey, X Y Z is back there crying." I'm like, "Okay, for what? What's, what's up?" And uh, she says, it's "Just it's just it's just sad that everybody's opening gifts, and she's not opening anything." <laughs> now, mind you. I prepared her for this maybe six months ahead of time. And uh, mind you, man, we're in our 20s. We're in our mid-20s, right? So she's back there balling. Now, the crime part didn't really bother me. It was uh, kind of embarrassing, you know, that my woman's back there balling because she didn't get nothing for Christmas. And it wasn't that I couldn't purchase anything. Hey, I had this, this deep conviction on my spirit. We talked about it. She accepted it from a face value. And, uh, but everybody else don't know what we talked about, the agreement. So they might be thinking I'm broke or something, whatever. So I guess my ego played and played a part in this. And, uh, Man, what I do? That night, that night, <laughs> we left the kids with her folks. I'm talking about two, three in the morning, man. And I drove her down to San Antonio. Yeah, the boardwalk. I didn't have any reservations. This wasn't planned. So to accommodate her, and more than accommodate her to save face and not look broke, I took her to San Antonio, just bam, drove down there. Got a room, uh, slept in the room, made it down there about maybe six in the morning, seven in the morning. Man, I'm telling you, I think I showered that morning. And man, I got so sick. I got so sick after showering. I had flu-like symptoms. My nose was running. I was sneezing. I was weak. Uh, man, it was horrible. It was horrible, man. You would have thought I had the flu. I thought I had the flu. And so we're going through the day. I'm drinking water. So I don't know if something was up with the water or what. I'm getting sicker. I'm just feeling bad. I'm toughing it out. The day gets to rolling. We hit the boardwalk. Man, I'm just, I'm out of it, man. Not not feeling good at all. Day goes on, night, go, night comes. We go to this restaurant, we go to a bar. I'm feeling horrible. Uh, 
I'm feeling horrible, man. I'm talking about sick, dog sick. And I, at the time, I attributed it to the water because I had heard that sometimes the water is not, is not too sanitary. But she wasn't sick. I was the only one having an issue uh, and getting these symptoms. And uh, it was a horrible time. I had a horrible time, man. I think we only stayed a day, a full day. It headed back. I think that next morning, I was sick, man. I was sick. I couldn't even drive back to Dallas. I felt so bad. And so, as soon as we got back into Dallas, I felt better. And I'm telling you, man, you might think it's a coincidence. You might just think, hey, it's a fluke. It's just something that happened. But as soon as I touched back in Dallas, I felt better. And to this day, man, that was over 20 years ago, maybe right at 20 years ago. To this day, man, I know, I know that, and I feel deeply that that happened to me because I was disobedient. Yeah, I know that happened because I was disobedient. I ended up spending more money in San Antonio with the room, with the tips, with the different restaurants, food, drinks, the gas. I ended up spending more on that trip than I would have spent on her. And I had a horrible time in San Antonio. And it was all because I was disobedient. I, I didn't listen to my higher self. I knew I was, I was wrong. I knew what I should have been doing. I had signed a contract between my higher self and my lower self, the spirit and flesh, by speaking this. I had the thought and I spoke it. That's a contract. And it was for all the right reasons. It wasn't um, It wasn't because I was a bit selfish I wanted to do this or anything. I was going to get that money I would have spent to charity. So it was for a righteous reason. And yeah, yeah, I, I learned a lot from that day. And... Never have I made that mistake again. I never want that feeling again. When you talk about sick, man. Man, I've never had those types of symptoms since then. And uh, I've been sick, of course, since then, but nothing like that. I was I was dog sick. Had no, I didn't have a good time at all. She didn't have a good time. Because I wasn't an enjoyable person. I was sick. And so it was a waste of money, waste of time. And, uh, yeah, I learned a lot. Now, fast forward, get married decades later, right? That didn't last long. And, and let me let me go back to, uh, for the women that are listening, right? So, um, when God is speaking to the women, when God is speaking to your man, and he shares that vision with you, Right, because I didn't have to share that with her. I could have just did my own thing, but I'm being considerate. All right, being considerate, I'm being loving, and I'm sharing this vision with her. So when a man is sharing that vision, his vision with you, and your ego or your mind can't really wrap itself around what's going on or does not want to release what you're used to doing, or you don't want to be in discomfort. If he gives in, you you think you've gotten your way, you know, um, for the time being, you've gotten your way maybe, if he gives in, but he's going to suffer. And let me tell you what's going to happen. Um, he's going to come to resent you. Because he's going to trace back what all happened. And he's going to kind of resent you and not trust you. And he's going to want to get away from you. Now, the fact of the matter is also, though, guys, talking to the guys now, <clears throat> regardless of what she's going through, regardless of what she's complaining or crying or 
giving you pushback, man, you know your assignment. You know what you got to do. And it's in your best interest to do it, to be obedient. Or you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. And um, you won't win. So, hey, man, do what you got to do. Be obedient. And that was kind of, as far as the scale, from 1 to 10, that situation, I would probably consider, you know, a 5 on face value. But um, it's a 10 as far as being obedient. You know, all of us are 10. All, all assignments have the same importance. All contracts have the same importance. You know, but on face value, it probably wasn't a big deal. But going deeper, the obedience part, man, that, that's a big thing. And the disobedience is a big thing. Now, fast forward, remarried. And uh, vision came to me again. Now, I've been single all these years, right? Over over 10 years, maybe over 15 years. Been single, just doing my thing. Now, I wasn't buying anyone any gifts. I was a single man. I was doing my thing, right? I didn't have to prep anyone, right? Or prepare anyone. Single man. I get remarried. Vision hits me again. I tell Yaya <clears throat> the vision. Now, this was about uh, five years ago. I told her the vision. <clears throat> she wasn't she wasn't feeling it at first. You know, my wife's love language is gifts. That's her love language, man. She loves gifts. And uh, I love giving gifts. I do. Uh, but as far as these holidays and all this, all this stuff, man, spending this money on every holiday, every month, especially Christmas, I said, no, nah, I can't do it. So it kicked in. <laughs> the vision kicked in. Hey, it felt funny for her the first year, but she adapted. No pushback. It felt funny the second year. No pushback, she adapted. So I said, wow, okay. I said, I, got, I, I really got me a good one. And I know my wife loves gifts. So I said, this is what we'll do. I said, we'll celebrate your birthday and Mother's Day. So we don't celebrate Valentine's, Valentine's Day. We don't celebrate Christmas. Um, uh, Thanksgiving none of that so and it's not even a religious thing it's not a religious thing it's a uh, it's an economic thing it's a discipline thing it's an obedience thing I don't know why they hit my spirit I don't, I don't know why my spirit was disturbed with that I didn't ask for that but I gotta be obedient and uh yeah. So when I saw she was submissive and cooperative with me, I said, wow, I got to reward that. I said, let me give in some. And uh, her birthday and Mother's Day. That's what we do. Um, I don't care about none of this stuff being celebrated, but I, I do that. I do those two things for her. But um, yeah. And so me and her, man, we've been blessed. We've been blessed. And we've been blessed because things are in proper order. You know, I'm obedient to my higher self. Uh, do I bat a thousand? No. But I'm obedient and that's my, where my heart is to do the right thing. She's submissive and cooperative with me. As a result, man, blessings just come our way. Opportunities come our way. We have a peaceful home. We have a peaceful union. Uh, our, our communication is a 10. So, uh, you know, like any other relationship, you know, we don't, we don't fight, but we, we uh, have our disagreements and we, we work them out like adults. And hey man, I know it works. So to all the brothers out there, Listen to your higher self. 
get things in proper order, man. I know she might complain, know she might whine, but man, when that thing hits your spirit, you, you think it, and then when you speak it, hey man, that clock is ticking, and hey man, I'm telling you, you can dis dis disobey if you want, <laughs> you gotta come back and retake that test, and I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen, man. Like I said, it's gonna be strife and bitterness between y'all two. Uh, if you listen to her or let her get into you, to your, to your head and to your emotions, man, explain to her what's going on. She can ride with it, not ride with it, but you got your assignment. You should deal with it. All right. Hey, think about that. Let me know what you think from me to you as always love. Peace.